This is the Paul McGuire Report on Paul McGuire. I have been struggling uh, about what to call or name this particular program, the Paul McGuire Report. It simply deals with the fact that we are in uh, an hour of global crisis, and there is this, this mass proliferation of, in many cases, self-appointed prophets, self-appointed, not God-appointed, self-appointed, people appointing themselves into the position of prophet and then claiming that God sent them this dream, that dream, this vision, that dream, the other. Well, there's a problem with that. And the problem is this is a violation of God's word. Jesus Christ warned us over and over and over again, so did the Apostle Paul, about the proliferation of false prophets in the last days and false teachers and doctrines of demons and false messiahs. Every time I turn on Christian television, I see somebody else who claims to be a prophet who has some variation or some difference on what's going to happen to the United States and the world due to the uh, coronavirus or whatever. Now, let's be honest. God is not schizophrenic, nor is he bipolar, nor does he have multiple personality disorder. God's not confused in his supreme being uh, about what the outcome is. God wouldn't have a prophet over here on the left say one thing and the prophet on the right say the complete opposite. And you have a lot of these prophets disagreeing with one another. People stepping outside the level of their anointing. People who can't discern the difference between what they imagine, what a feeling is, uh, what uh, a human dream is, or a human intuition. They can't, they can't tell the difference between their own human intuition <clears throat> and the authentic voice of the Holy Spirit, if he spoke to them at all in an in a out loud tone. Most of the stuff that, that people are passing off as prophecies is nothing more than either self-inspired uh, visions and dreams, human-inspired Maybe they feel it's the Holy Spirit. In any case, God, look, God is not confused. God doesn't have a fragmented mind. So this, this is, we're in an hour of crisis. And there's a reason why from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible continually warns about the dangers of false prophets, false prophecies, not only just for the children of Israel, but for the body of Christ, especially in the last days. So we have prophets everywhere making all kinds of prophecies. And the the tragedy is, is that Bible teachers and people on television who are Christians and people who are loosely in the category of Christian leaders do not, are, are not personally trained in the proper study of the Bible themselves. Their theological training on how to rightly divide God's word it, it, it is, is lacking. And therefore, they're, they're plunging ahead into the apocalypse, no uh, pun intended. And their theology is not formed based on the Bible. They aren't theologically trained because they haven't studied the scripture. They haven't been taught how to rightly divide the word of God. And so any little goosebump that they get must be something from the Lord. And many of these people contradict each other. We, as the body of Christ, are not supposed to be putting men and women on platforms and kind of like worshiping them in an idolatrous manner, uh, turning our heads to the left and right, trying to figure out who's got a voice, who's got the word from the Lord. You want a word from the Lord? Get open your Bible and read it. You'll get a word from the Lord. You don't channel surf to get a word from the Lord. You don't go on this social media, that social media. It's not, a, it's not like an Easter egg hunt for crying out loud. 
Searching for a prophetic answer is not an Easter egg hunt. As Christians, we don't even believe in Easter. It's the commercialization of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't believe in Easter eggs because that goes back to Ishtar in ancient Babylon. And eggs were fertility symbols of the goddess Ishtar, who, who comes from Semiramis, who was the wife, who was a harlot, the wife to Nimrod, the founder of ancient Babylon. For crying out loud, you would think that much of the evangelical church is on a, uh, an Easter egg hunt. And then, what blows my mind, literally, into oblivion, is I read all these reports um, coming out from uh, articles, Christian magazines and newspapers and stuff. And I'm going to just read you what I'm reading here. This, this was according to a survey, okay? And uh, it's talking about the overwhelming number of pastors. This, fir- this survey was conducted in early 2020. And um, it talks about the fact that uh, Uh, This overwhelming percentage of pastors believe that the signs of the times are coming true right before our eyes. Oh, really? I don't don't doubt the I don't doubt the the research of the article. I, I don't doubt the statistics. But here's my question. You have this overwhelming percentage of of evangelical pastors talking about that they believe in Bible prophecy and, and, and the literal return of Jesus Christ and Israel and, and biblical prophecies. Okay, great. Where were all these pastors, this overwhelming percentage of pastors who believe that we are in the signs of the times, that biblical, biblical prophecy is happening all around us, right? It's some astronomical figure that they believe this. Well, where were they? Last month, the month before, the month before, the year before, the year before, the year before. Where were they for the last 20 years or more? They have these, many of these same pastors have been completely silent. They have not taught Bible prophecy at all. They haven't, they've censored Bible prophecy and they've persecuted those ministers and those Christians who believe in Bible prophecy, and bothered to study it. So, so we have this kind of like uh, super trendiness that all these pastors now that were in the coronavirus, oh, they all believe in Bible prophecy. Were they faithful watchmen? I mean, I'm asking a very serious question. Were they faithful watchmen or not? What does the Bible say? Um, there's, there's statistics all over this article. It gets to be confusing. But the point is, there's a very large number of pastors who believe that we're in the time of the, the signs of the times that Christ spoke about and with Israel and Bible prophecy. Okay? Um, one in ten pastors... 11% say they don't consider any of these part of the birth pains. That's a tiny minority. Okay? The minority don't believe that these are the birth pains that Jesus Christ talked about. So, my question is if you have all these pastors, um, nine, according to this article, vast majority of pastors see signs of end times and current events by Aaron Earls. Um, It it says almost nine in ten pastors see at least some current events matching those Jesus said would occur shortly before he returns to the earth. So the majority of Christian pastors, evangelical pastors, say they believe that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled in our lifetime. Okay. I don't doubt the research. 
But let's take, and this is not designed to criticize pastors for, for just no reason. But this is all in light of the, the increased intensity surrounding the coronavirus, okay? And other earthquakes and other things. So, so a faithful watchman, not an unfaithful watchman, a faithful watchman stays in a high tower or a high place, and a faithful watchman keeps on the alert and lookout for the enemy coming in the distance. And it is the command of God that the faithful watchman stays awake, pays attention, and then blows the shofar, the trumpet of warning to the children of Israel as they encamp. The faithful watchman stays awake, okay, blows the trumpet of warning long enough in advance so that the children of Israel can rally themselves and protect themselves from the enemy. Well, if all these Christian pastors who are saying that we believe in Bible prophecy is being fulfilled, my question immediately is, I don't care what you believe today in light of the coronavirus. What did you believe yesterday, last week, a month ago, a year ago, five years ago? I'll tell you the, mo- the vast majority. This is not Paul McGuire saying this. This is according to highly respected pollsters. Something like 87, according to these respected pollsters, before the coronavirus, these polls were taken. Barna and other respected pollsters said that 87% of evangelical churches refuse to teach Bible prophecy. 87%. So now we've got these figures that 9 out of 10 evangelical pastors um, believe in Bible prophecy now that we have a coronavirus. Well, what happened to the 87% of evangelical churches and pastors that refused to teach Bible prophecy for decades? For decades. Are they not <clears throat> what the Bible calls unfaithful watchmen on the wall? Because the watchman on the wall has to keep awake in terms of prophecy to warn the people of God. Where, was the, where were the, the, the shofar? Trumpets blowing. Where were these pastors? Man, I've been all across the United States of America speaking at prophecy conferences. And the one thing prophecy conference promoters tell me that it's next to impossible to get local evangelical churches and pastors to support or participate in Bible prophecy conferences. The pastors, the evangelical pastors, won't touch it. So does that does that mean that they're false? Uh, uh, that they're unfaithful watchmen, I'll let you decide. Because here's the judgment. There's a way to determine whether or not somebody is a faithful or an unfaithful watchman. The faithful watchman stays awake, keeps his eyes peeled to see if the enemy of God's people is coming from the distance, and then stays awake, looks at the signs of the times, and then blows the shofar, the trumpet, way in advance to warn God's people that the enemy to destroy God's people is coming. These pastors have not been around, except they have. They've been hiding somewhere. They've been hiding somewhere. And, and, to, and, to, and, 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 and to let this just slide by, it's not a matter of retribution. It's not a matter of a desire to embarrass somebody. It's a matter of accountability. Okay? It's a matter of holding Watchmen accountable. Where have you been, man? And besides that, you're still not telling the people the truth, the whole truth. So, what is the biblical rule? And this is the number one thing. The biblical rule is quite simple. That in the Old Testament, according to the law of God, If somebody claimed to be a prophet, and if they had a dream or a vision or a prophecy, and they made and they declared their their dream or vision or prophecy to God's people, the children of Israel, and that prophecy, that dream or that vision did not come true, the penalty, according to the Old Testament, was that prophet was designated as a false prophet and had to be stoned to death, killed, 
for making a false prophecy. So in other words, the biblical law was 100% accuracy by this person who maintains that they're a prophet, or they get stoned to death. That's the biblical rule. That's the rule that Israel lived under. Now, people go, well, we're in the New Testament. We're in the New Testament. But do you think that God is, uh, is uh, ignores false prophets? Jesus Christ didn't talk about ignoring false prophets. Why do you think Jesus Christ went out of his way to warn the disciples and his people about the fact that in the last days there would be an alarming rise of false prophets, false teachers, false apostles. Why? Because those are the people that Satan uses to lead God's people astray. And yet we have this epidemic of of Christian leaders and Christian pastors and, and, and people who should know better teaching the body of Christ They need to teach themselves first. Why are you following false prophets? You say, well, I don't believe they're a false prophet. Look, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. And it doesn't take a Nazi rocket scientist to figure this out. That the biblical test for whether or not someone is a true prophet of God, is 100% accuracy. Now, I know famous prophets. By famous, I mean uh, their names are well known to large numbers of Christians in the United States and uh, around the world. And they have made, many of these people have made prophecies that have not only not come true, the opposite came true. Yet they continue to get big crowds being prophets. Well, what happened to God's law about making false prophecies? The lack of discernment in God's people is evidence of the fact that they're not being taught by faithful Bible teachers. They're being taught by false teachers. False teachers. False teachers. Because, again, there is a biblical rule. You can't violate the biblical rule. The biblical rule is this, that the word of God is the final authority. That's the biblical rule, that God's word, not an experience, not a dream, not a fantasy, that God's word alone is our final authority. And if it's not written explicitly in God's word, you don't embrace it. You don't believe it just because somebody says they had a prophecy. This is a very serious thing. The blind leading the blind. It's going to end up in a disaster. It's it's like on some of these programs, it's like the Prophet of the Week Club. It's like ridiculous. At least in, in certain other professions, people have to be licensed or people have to be trained or whatever. Now, anybody in the evangelical church can stand up and say they had a vision or God spoke to them or whatever. It means nothing. And on top of that, you have huge numbers of people in the body of Christ who theoretically have the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth in them, following all kinds of mysterious internet personalities that they don't know anything about. They don't even know who these people are. Some of them go by one letter in the alphabet. I'm not targeting anybody. I'm not putting this person or that person down. But for crying out loud, your fault. There's all these internet entities and and people. How do you know they're even not they're real? How do you know they're not algorithms developed by the CIA? How do you know they're not deliberate disinformation agents? I can go all over the internet and this person is speaking and they have a huge following. Z is speaking. Who did you hear what Z had to say? Boy, Z said this. I mean, really, man, how stupid can you really be? Does it take effort to be that stupid? Because I don't believe God created you to be that stupid. You're abusing and misusing the brain he gave you. You're supposed to discern the prophets, it says in the New Testament. 
you're following Z and you're following G and you're following these names, these entities, these faces, these people. You don't know anything about these people. And they, oh yes, they know the secret plan. Oh yes, they know the secret secret plan. They were there in the White House. Oh, in fact, that Z is really Trump. They were they 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 know the secret plan. So just go back to sleep in your slumber. Just fall asleep, and and you know everything's under control, and all the enemies of uh, of God and whatever, and they're going to be arrested and magical thinking, magical thinking. Did you know that the enemies of America systematically strategized? I write about it in my book, Conquering the Matrix. Get educated for crying out loud. Read, know what you're, know what you're talking about. So the Frankfurt School Marxists that I write about in my book, um, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World, the Frankfurt School Marxists were high-level Marxist revolutionaries who were university professors trained in Moscow, and their goal was to initiate a cultural revolution in the United States and other European Western nations and basically have a soft uh, cultural communist Marxist revolution. And And these men are very educated men, but they were very devious and very evil. They, they, they said in their own words that one of their goals was to promote magical thinking among Christians and conservatives and Americans as much as possible, to, to encourage them to indulge in what they called magical thinking. Magical thinking is when you revert to being a little child and you believe in Disneyland and Mickey Mouse despite the fact that it's not real. Magical thinking is when you deliberately choose to throw away your logic your reason, your intelligence, and engage in, in, in absurd patterns of behavior, which are, are, are the equivalent of the Easter Bunny, you know, uh, or Santa Claus coming down your chimney and you leave out a, a, a thing, a cup of milk and, and some cookies that you bake for him. That's magical thinking. There is no Santa Claus. There is no Easter Bunny. This is magical thinking. We've got Christians that are into magical thinking. And that was a mind control technique developed by the enemy to bring America down. Because if you've got a na- nation of magical thinkers, you've got a nation of essentially idiots. Why are all these Christians engaging in magical thinking? Magical thinking. Not biblical thinking. They're all engaged in magical thinking. Everything is magically going to be okay. You know who else engaged in the luxury of magical thinking? This is not an anti-Semitic statement. It's a historical statement. A huge number of the Jews during World War II in Nazi Germany, when they were confronted with the facts that there were real-life concentration camps which, in which the Nazis were burning alive in oven the Jews, in ovens the Jews, and others, and the Nazis were, were uh, gassing to death the Jews, when, when, that, when that factual, hard-to-swallow information uh, began to, to go to the Jewish leadership and other Jews, nobody believed it. They couldn't believe it because it was out of their box. They'd never experienced this before. So for no rational, logical reason, they decided to reject evidence that was coming towards them and exchange, the Jews exchange evidence for magical thinking. That, that these stories of uh, concentration camps and gassing to death and being burnt in oven, ovens and stuff where seven million people died in the Holocaust, it all, it all you know, all wasn't true. Well, it was true, wasn't it? It was true. You can see the pictures today. I've met people who survived the Holocaust. I don't know if they're alive now. I imagine they're dead. But when I was a kid, I met a lot of my friends' grandparents survived the Holocaust. They, they came from Germany. They were traumatized. And you could see the, the, the green ink numerical tattoos 
written on their forearms and other places. There was no magical thinking for them. They had the evidence of the tattoo. So now we've got magical thinking going on. We've got the coronavirus and the magical thinking response. You know what? If somebody dies, if somebody goes down, if we lose our freedoms in America, if we lose our nation, don't blame God. How dare you blame God? God's been trying to rescue this nation since he started it. Don't blame God. Blame all, all the Christians and others who believed in magical thinking. By the way, magical thinking is completely idolatrous because you're not re- worshiping the biblical God. You're, you're worshiping uh, uh, an idol. Um, I can't. I, I'm not reading what this person said. I'm ready to barf. It's so disgusting. It's Christianese at its worst. I can't take it. Really, I cannot take it because Christianese is synonymous with magical thinking. Okay, so let's look at the facts. Never before have we needed to not only rightly divide the Word of God, but use the God-given intelligence that the Lord has given us so we can survive, so we can overcome, so that we can be victorious, and so that we can fulfill the Great Commission, win people to Jesus Christ, make disciples of all nations. But none of that. See, that, that can be done with supernatural thinking that's biblically based, but that's different than magical thinking. Because supernatural thinking that's biblically based means that we pray to God and believe that God can miraculously answer prayer. But we put some constraints. Um, we don't come back from heaven with visions that there's public transportation in heaven, and isn't it going to be great? That we, you know, when I read this stuff, I get post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, I've never had that, but I get it. Because people are, are saying that God took them up to heaven, and then they said heaven's really wonderful because it has the greatest public transportation system ever seen. God has made this incredibly fun public transportation system for his people in heaven. Do you know how insane that sounds? Do you have any idea how totally insane that is? That person obviously has never ridden, that's not good English, but that person has never apparently traveled on public transportation, because public transportation is in most cases notoriously awful, disgusting, filthy, substandard, and a nightmare. So you're saying that God's imagination is so limited that the the only way we're going to get around in heaven is to take a heavenly equivalent of public transportation? When public transportation down here on earth is synonymous with, with substandard, disgusting transportation. Have you seen the pictures and the videos of the people crammed together in those subway cars in New York City, all wearing deficient face masks and those plexiglass eyeglasses thing? And the social distancing, there's no social distancing on the subway. They're all jammed together, pressing their bodies against one another And they're all wearing masks, and they're wearing scarves in a desperate attempt to keep germs from from being spread. That's public transportation. So you're going to tell me God's God's going to use that as the template for transportation in heaven? What are you, crazy? You are not going to survive the, the corona crisis tomorrow or anything else until you give up magical thinking and start to renew your mind and have biblical thinking and stop listening to false prophets, false teachers, 
and doctrines of demons and start using your God given common sense, rational thinking, and logic. That that's your freedom plan. So you, you got to choose to either rightly divide the word of God or not. Why do you think Jesus Christ went out of his way to repetitively warn about false prophets, false teachers in the last days? Because he knew that when the signs of the times exploded, there would also be an explosion of false prophets and false teachers. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. Visit paulmcguire.us. Spread this message far and wide. Um, Send it to your friends and visit paulmcguire.us. This is the Paul McGuire Report. We'll be back in just a second. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. It's very, very important that you and I reach people with the truth of God's Word and interpret God's Word for them in a manner that rightly divides the Word of God so that they don't perish, so so that they can survive, so that they can experience God's deliverance and victory. This is no small thing. God sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And the the number, the sheer number of Bible verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament that warn us about false false prophets is is God is is shouting to us so to speak, not in an angry manner, but God wants us not to be deceived. So let's just read some verses. In Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9, My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. In Jeremiah twenty three sixteen. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. I mean, we have people, there are so many people, I've never seen this in my entire life. it's, It's such the opposite of common sense. Okay, we've all assembled these kits, right? Where you got to assemble something. I'm horrible at assembling kits. I can't stand doing it. When I was a kid, I bought a couple of model airplanes, model jets, and I assembled them, and I hated it. The way so many Christians in America approach Bible prophecy, including Christian leaders, including Christian pastors, this is how they approach Bible prophecy. They sit down all by themselves, all by themselves, and they decide they're going to figure it out. It's pride. It's, they're going to figure it out all by themselves. They're going to really seek the Lord. They're going to get along with the Lord. And the Lord's going to supernaturally show them everything, what these uh, verses mean, what this means for America. God's going to show them everything that's going to happen in the last days. God will just open up it, just like a panoramic view for you. That's a very seductive lie. But what really happens when people do that, That's the equivalent of you and I or somebody we know getting, attempting to literally build and construct President Trump's super jet, Air Force One, all by ourselves. Okay, so just imagine you had a big, thick instruction manual of charts and diagrams, and you put the screw in point A into the point B, and then you run the AC wire. I mean, you, okay, you're building something that is highly complex on every level. It's called Air Force One, probably the most sophisticated super jet in the world. And, you're, and you think that you by yourself sitting somewhere with your little instruction manual and reading the directions, you think in your vanity and self-deception and pride that you're going you're gonna to rightly divide this. And you're going to, you're going to, 
But you're basically saying with Bible prophecy is, I don't need God. I can build Air Force One all by myself in my garage with just my toolkit. What are you, what are you hallucinating on? You can't build Air Force One all by yourself. You can't, couldn't even understand the diagrams. And yet you look at God's word, which is far more complex than Air Force One, and you won't interpret it according to the rules of interpretation that God gives. There's only one for, word for that. It's called pride. Um, Luke 6.26 Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. For that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. I've always, <laughs> I've always found this verse to be very, very comforting. Because, no, because people do not speak well of me all over the place. I'm attacked all the time. So I find this reassuring because it says, Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. That that's not my life experience. For that is how, they, how, that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Matthew 24, 4, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if impossible, even the elect. So Jesus Christ is saying in the last days, during the signs of the times, there's going to be false Christs and false messiahs and false prophets, and they're going to perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The elect are those chosen by God to spend all eternity with him. Matthew 16, 11 to 12. How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understand that he was not telling them to be a guard, to, to them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You, my friend, listening to me, Paul McGuire on the Paul McGuire Report, you and I, are supposed to understand that you and I are supposed to be on guard against the yeast of the bread, but not. But, but we're not talking about like bread you eat. We're supposed to be on guard against the ye- yeast used in the teaching of modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees. And by the way, modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees are not simply... Jewish teachers, they're ev- modern Sadducees and Pharisees are evangelical Bible teachers. Not all of them, some of them. Okay? And the, the, if you allow yourself to be corrupted by the Spirit, and it's not the Holy Spirit, of their teaching, you, you will find yourself on the way to hell. Second Timothy 4, 3-4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Yeah, I know. They want to follow Z or R. Well, today, let's start a new cult. Follow G. Did you hear what G said? G must have, G must be sitting in the White House. Oh, come on, man. What are you addicted to? Are you mainlining the Cartoon Channel content? Is that what it's about? I mean, do you not have a pulp? A little piece of pulp of a brain left? But the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Look, running around following G and S and V and W and Z and basing your life plans and your bank account plans on what these people say, you're, you're, sorry. Um, you, You know what God says? For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Acts 20, 28 to 30. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you, has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. 
2 Peter 3, 14 to 18. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless and at peace with him. I'm going to skip ahead. 1 John 4, 1 to 6. Um, Oh, this is very important. Starting in verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. I mean, I'm just reading you a, just a, a tiny number of verses. Um that talk about teaching of the Word of God and faithfulness of of Bible teachers. This is so critical. God, this is why God repeats it over and over again. This is a critical, critical um, part of God's teaching in the Bible is 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 to not follow these these false teachers. Or, or computer manufactured teachers, or psyop created teachers, and you should know what I, I mean by that, and, I, and I'm saying that to you respectfully. You need to wear the full armor of God because you're in a spiritual war. The domain commodity up for grabs in a spiritual war is: will truth prevail or will deception prevail? Deception or lying, which always comes from the evil one, will will bring us down, will bring you down. You need to know the truth. You need to listen to teachers and and people that prioritize the truth. Don't make stuff up from their imagination and then say, God, you know, this and God that. Never before have we not needed authentic voices of leadership that are educated and biblically sound. It is despicable, really. It is despicable. The three-ring circus, some of this prophet stuff has become. And, and, and I don't despise the gift of prophecy. Um, but I'm going to follow Jesus and be on my guard from false teachers and false prophets and false doctrine. Because Jesus Christ said that would be a huge part of the last days. I mean, you know how many people I talk to or read or whatever? They all have a different timetable for the tribulation, the rapture. They all have a a little different, unique twist. There are so many disagreements and so is God all that confused? Did they, and all the people that I mean, not all, most of them, but believe that God showed them the, the truth of this. Well, if God showed you the truth of this, how come everybody else is saying something different? Use your, use your God-given mind. Don't get over to a reprobate mind. A great apostasy means the great falling away from the truth. You can only fall away from the truth to the degree that you were with the truth. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. You need to cry out to God for wisdom. This is how you double check with God. It's humility. You go before the Lord. Lord, forgive me if I've opened the door to deception or delusion or whatever. I humble myself before you, Jesus, and I ask you to give me the truth. You, You cry out to God for the truth, and then you match it up with the Word of God. With the Word of God, 
you recognize our fight is not against flesh and blood. Ultimately, we're not fighting against people. We're fighting against principalities and powers and the dark unseen forces of wickedness in heavenly places. When I say stuff to you like, there's a relationship between the coronavirus and 5G, I'm not saying it that because I, I'm whacked out on LSD or mescaline, and I can't think of anything better to say. That's not, you know, going in the hashish pipe and just, just coming out in cartoon language talk. I'm saying that because it's a scientific fact that 5G operates at 60 hertz, okay? 60 hertz is a very uh, unnatural electromagnetic frequency, okay? 5G is 100 times more powerful than your traditional cell phone, which would be 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. All of those only advance in power one number. There's one number difference increase in power between 3G and 4G. But when you move from 4G to 5G, you have to understand it's a different computation. It's a quantum leap. So the difference between 5G technology and 4G and 3G and 2G is a minimum of 100 times more powerful, not just one time more powerful. It's 100 times more powerful, operating often at 60 hertz or higher. It's the same spectrum of frequency that the U.S. military uses in directed energy beam weapons, which causes people's bodies to feel like they're boiling to death and they run for their lives. So what happens is when you are exposed directly or indirectly in a 5G environment being promoted like crazy by the big phone companies and the computer companies, these 5G antennas are going to be literally on a global uh, scale, millions of more, globally, millions more 5G antennas will be installed because 5G antennas are... Um, have to because they operate in bursts or pulse pulses you need to increase the numerical number of transmitting towers by just every couple of blocks you got to have a 5G transmitter and they're different sizes and shapes they're not all the big traditional cell tower and so it the average person you, you're, you're going to, you, you're already experiencing it, but as time continues, you're living in an invisible blanket or an invisible fog of a, uh, an electromagnetic frequency that, that operates at the same level as a directed energy beam weapon. And it is a scientific fact that the electromagnetic frequency that 5G operates on is killing to your immune system accelerates the aging process, uh, 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 reduces your longevity, um, is a precursor to Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, and all kinds of psychiatric illnesses. It's also an activator for a whole host of flus and bacteria and everything else. In other words, this is why we know scientific, scientifically because uh, how 5G can accelerate or activate the coronavirus, it's not because we were watching some old James Bond movie where the villain is, is in some secret hideaway under the sea or something, uses science fiction weapons against 007. That's not what we're talking about. It's a simple scientific fact that 5G microwave technology, EMF technology, is a particular frequency that harms your immune system, that makes it easier for you to get disease because it's reducing your immune system. That frequency scientifically is reducing or harming your immune system. So when you're in, you're in a 5G saturated environment, whether you know it or not, your immune system is going down, down, down to whatever degree, which makes it far more likely on a statistical basis for you to catch or for the coronavirus to be activated in your body. 
Do you see the correlation? The correlation is really simple. We're not saying there's a conspiracy from Mars and the dark side of the force that uh, previously had a UFO orbiting Jupiter. I mean, the nonsense that I read on the internet and Christians regurgitate is pathetic beyond belief. I mean, really. It's really simple. There isn't some dark and spiritual plot from from the Vrilya maidens in Nazi Germany who and the, the Reich and the Nazis who secretly communicated with uh, alien invaders who gave them super technology. And then they also gave them weaponized biotechnology. It's not that. It's really simple. Electromagnetic frequencies have been around since before time. Um, in since the advent of elect- electricity, since the advent of man-made electricity in our atmosphere, which begins with like Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, and Tesla, and those people, when man first began to harness electromagnetic energy, that increased the electrification of our atmosphere in in very slow uh, amounts and and staggered amounts. But you see, as we began, industrial nations began to become more and more uh, energy addicted, as we began to have television sets and electric cars and air conditioners and refrigerators and washing machines and computers and on and on and on, we began to use cell phones, more and more electromagnetic frequencies. And we literally bombarded our atmosphere, lower atmosphere, upper atmosphere. We've literally changed the composition of the electromagnetic frequency blanket that wraps around planet Earth. We we have accelerated the electrification of our atmosphere which has turned our atmosphere into a toxic hot zone that from which all kinds of of negative things happen when any human organism or living organism you ask yourself the question why are bees dying in you know large numbers and laying dead at the base of a 5G antenna pole why Because the electromagnetic frequency generated by the 5G pole just happens to kill the bee. And bees are essential for our ecosystem and our food supply, etc., etc. Then um, you have birds falling out of the sky, and nobody knows why. Birds are falling out of the sky because they are being exposed to. 5G electromagnetic frequency technology that zaps the birds and kills them. I've seen pictures of large plants all shriveled up. Why was the large green plant all shriveled up? Because it was exposed to 5G technology. I've read serious scientific publications from high-level teams of Israeli scientists and other scientists all around the world. I have printed this for you to read for yourself. I put it in my book, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World, which you can get at paulmcguire.us. I've put all the data I'm talking about in my book because scientists from all over the world and in Israel know that 5G negatively impacts are God-given, uh, healthy electromagnetic field for a frequency. We all have a specific electromagnetic frequency. But when we resonate, or when we vibrate, or when we're exposed to a toxic frequency, like 60 hertz is not good for us, you're going to have more diseases, more deaths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay? When you're operating, let's say, at 40 hertz, which I believe is the, also the Schumann Earth resonance frequency, your body is operating, your body and mind is operating at a, at a more harmonious rhythm because it's organically a more harmonious rhythm. 
you're, you're enhancing your immune system. You're, you're warding off your body's natural powers to defeat disease. You see, it's really simple. You expose yourself to certain frequencies of EMF, like 5G. You're going to kill your brain, your body, and your spirit. You expose yourself to EMF fields which are harmonious or natural, like it's a good idea to get some sunlight. In limited dosages, you should, your body should be exposed to sunlight. And with your doctor's advice, because some people can get skin cancer. But most people are lacking in vitamin D3, which is produced by exposure to sunlight. Exposure to sunlight fires your body with healing electrons and, and causes a healing electromagnetic frequency to resonate in your entire being. You see how that works. It's very, it's very simple, very simple. And then having your bare feet touch the bare dirt and the bare greenery. No, you're not worshiping Gaia, the goddess, religion, Mother Earth. No, you're not doing that. Because to do that, you would have to do something, and the intent of your heart and mind would be to worship Gaia. No, the, the intent and heart of your mind is to get rid of some of the dirty electricity. And you say so you don't believe in that. You don't believe in it because you're an idiot. T take your shoes off. Or wear certain kinds of shoes, or wear your socks, walk on a particular type of rug, okay? One which, which you do some walking, and it charges you up with static electricity. We've all had that experience. And then, when your body's charged up with static electricity from walking on a rug or whatever, and your fingernail or whatever touches a doorknob, it hurts sometimes this little bit because it's... There's this crack, and it's you can see and feel the zap of, of the static electricity charge built up in you. It's relatively power powerful. Well, it, it's a no-brainer to figure out that a static electricity can alter your EMF field than sunlight, 5G, and other things can alter alter your body's EMF field. So when you are barefoot uh, and your the base of your foot is touching grass or the dirt, you are in effect grounding yourself. You're not worshiping Gaia. You're grounding yourself, and that gets rid of dirty, toxic electricity. It helps get rid of toxic EMF fields. It's a grounding thing. It's a good thing. Um, personally, I think it would make a good protocol for people's health. Because you see, let's just do the basic science. I'm, I'm reducing it to make it simple. Okay, so 5G is an electromagnetic frequency that um, has the power to, to destroy your immune system, spread disease, create mental illness. That's a scientific fact, okay? It can operate, 5G can operate at 60 hertz or higher. That's toxic to the human body. It stresses the human body, okay, which is not good for the health of the human body. 40 hertz puts the human body, soul, and spirit in, in, in more of a God-given rhythm. So if your, your body is all charged up with a toxic uh, electromagnetic field, such as from 5G, being grounded helps disperse or pull out that negative toxic electric field out of your body, which causes your immune system to get stronger, your ability to reject disease stronger. See how that works? It's very simple. So if you um, are surrounded with toxic EMF fields and 5G and all the rest of that stuff, it can ne negatively impact your health. So it's not that there's a bunch of people in some super conspiracy that have dialed up a specific frequency and, you know, you turn on the 5G and, and it activates on a, 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 a mycoplasma level uh, frequency. It's, it's not that. It's, it's more general than that. When you harm the body's immune system, by throwing an, uh, 
a toxic EMF field into it, you make it more susceptible to the coronavirus or any other virus or disease that may be there. Now, if this is hypothetical on my part, but I have done a lot of research to to, uh, raise this hypothetical question. If the coronavirus, because it's got many genetic similarities to SARS and other previous uh, biological warfare agents, if the coronavirus escaped from some kind of biological warfare laboratory, and if the, the coronavirus is really a, biologically, a biological warfare virus, then it's going to spread with, a, with an aggression and that, that is not found in normal natural diseases. Okay? Okay, now welcome to the world where real adults live with their minds open and think on a long-term basis. I allow, I rely upon the Holy Spirit guiding my research, but then I do meticulous research, comparative studies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the Lord led me to study EMF, electromagnetic frequencies, 20 years ago. And in and, and every book, he's heightened uh, in me a sense to write about EMF, 5G, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. So before the coronavirus was even an issue, before the word coronavirus was even known publicly, I was finishing up my book, uh, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World. And the Lord specifically put it in my heart to, to, do, to continue doing a lot of uh, uh, writing on 5G. So it's in the book, The Greatest Battle. Lots of information on 5G. But then the Lord also prompted me to study genetically modified organisms, and the Lord prompted me to study EMF fields, electromagnetic frequencies, and the Lord uh, prompted me to research um, um, EMF fields, 5G, and uh, autoimmune diseases and related subjects. With quotes from scientists, doctors, etc., etc. So that is all in my book, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World, along with um, uh, Conquering the Matrix and Mass Awakening. Okay, so here, 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 here's the thing. It's very important. You see there's a relationship between disease, mental and biological, and electromagnetic frequencies. And then, as my previous research began to reveal, I first talked about it in my book, uh, Conquering the Matrix, and then The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World, that I don't know what the total number of autoimmune diseases are. I don't think anybody knows. Let's say, hypothetically, there's 35 autoimmune diseases. The reality is just far more than that. So we're talking about all these diseases that people have that they don't speak about, that in a general sense, if they kill you, they kill you very slowly. They're more what are called disabling diseases. Autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, for the most part, don't kill very quickly. They quills, c- kill slowly over time by degenerating the body, All right, by, by, by negatively impacting the immune system. And so so you have an entire spectrum of these diseases, which I talk about at length in my book, The Greatest Battle. So I'm going to turn to that. And I want to, I just want to read you how the Holy Spirit guides my research. This is why I get so bothered by people who just like invent a prophet. They don't do any homework. They don't do any research. There's no accountability. They just make stuff up like they were sleeping on a cotton candy pillow. It's magical thinking, man. It's not responsible. The pilgrims and Puritans who birthed the, 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 the first great awakening, the most awesome, powerful biblical revival, the pilgrims and Puritans, like Jonathan Edwards, the spiritual father, 
of the first great awakening. Not only did they believe in the power of God and the authority of God's word, but these people knew, they studied science. He studied, the father of the first great awakening, wrote papers on physics. This was in the um, um, 1600s. Jonathan Edwards wrote books on physics and science, and so did the other Pilgrims and Puritans. They're very educated people. <clears throat> the, the, the education of science and theology, that forged the mindset that allowed God to pour out an authentic biblical reality. If you've got a bunch of people leading the body of Christ who have the intellectual equivalent, equivalent in their brains of multicolored, sugary fruit loops. You can pour all the Holy Spirit you want into them, but they don't have the, the spiritual foundation necessary to, to host and steer an authentic biblical great awakening and revival. All they got is a bunch of colored fruit loops banging against their neurological pathways in their cranium. That's not going to steward a biblical revival. So let me read you something from uh, my book, The Greatest Battle. It's called, the chapter is called Rise of Autoimmune and Man-Made Diseases. So, the, um, um, and and I'm going to read this because I I have it in a quote here, but you need to, if you don't already know, most of you know, but some of you don't, you need to know how evil these, these euthanasia people are. This is Prince Philip. A member of the Bilderberg Group. Just to, you want to look into his dark, evil heart. Let me quote you what Prince Philip said regarding population reduction. In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to solve overpopulation. Prince Philip, and it was a statement he made in 1988. That's an evil man. Okay, so these autoimmune diseases are diseases like Lyme disease, chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, Many psychiatric diseases come from uh, autoimmune diseases. Uh, And then weaponized biological warfare diseases, bioweapons, I talk about mycoplasma. Then I have a chapter called The Big Secret Behind the Rise of Autoimmune Diseases. Chronic bacteria and viral infections caused by the Gulf War disease and not PTSD. So I connect all the dots on the autoimmune diseases, 5G, electromagnetic frequencies, nutrition, vitamins, going to the doctor that knows what he's talking about, Nikola Tesla, and what I come up with is stuff that you can use to survive and to be an overcomer, okay? Stuff that can enable you to be an overcomer, because God doesn't want you to be a victim of all this stuff, but you're going to have to give up magical thinking and enter the realm of using your God-given mind. I don't, please forgive me if I sound somewhat um, condescending. I'm not trying to sound condescending, but look, God created nutrition. God created herbs. God created the sun, which creates vitamin D3. God created pure water, okay? God wants you to replenish and heal your body with God-given things. So, for example, zinc is something God made, a mineral. Zinc is a powerful antiviral. They say it's a a powerful antiviral in warding off the coronavirus. I'm not giving you medical advice now. I'm just telling you information that's out there. You have to check up on my research. Zinc is a powerful antiviral. Vitamin D3 is a a powerful antiviral. Um, um, B12 is a a powerful antiviral. All of these things can boost your immune system, which helps you to throw off diseases by technologies and chemicals and EMF fields that that are are harming your immune system. So, 
when we understand Bible prophecy, not that we were ashamed to teach Bible prophecy for the last 20 or 30 years of our life, and oh, when Paul just came out, now I'm all for teaching Bible prophecy. Of course, I haven't taught it yet. But when you read the book of Revelation, and you read about the signs of the times, you recognize that before the return of Jesus Christ, so for example, you see if you actually were taught the book of Revelation, which is, Bible prophecy is the most important theme in the Bible, but in the seven seal judgments, let me read you. Uh, what the seven seals reveal. They reveal, first, the white horse, who's the Antichrist, coming to conquer. The red horse, that represents war and bloodshed. The black horse, which represents famine. The pale horse, which represents pestilence and, and biological death and biological warfare. Souls under the altar, these are the martyrs that died believing in Jesus Christ. A great earthquake. That's just in the seven seals. Then we go to the seven trumpets. And there's all kinds of things. Silence in heaven. Hail, fire, blood. Sun diminished. Plague of locusts. Plague of horsemen. Um these plagues, um, the, the seven key figures, the woman represents Israel, dragon represents Satan, male child represents Christ, Michael is the arch- archangel, remnant, the saved Israel, antichrist, beast out of the sea, false prophet, beast out of the earth. The seven bowls, boils, this kind of reminds you of Egypt which I talk about in my book, The Greatest Battle. Boils, sea to blood, rivers to blood, great heat, darkness, Euphrates dried up, hail. Um, Seven dooms of Babylon, the return of Christ. I mean, intense stuff is happening. And God promises to protect his people supernaturally Um, and to deliver us from the wrath to come. So the promises of God are there for you. They're applicable for you to lay hold of by prayer and by standing on the word and the promises of, of God and having the power of the Holy Spirit in you and knowing that you have spiritual weapons and knowing that you have angelic armies dispatched to protect you and your loved ones and family, and knowing that you can call on Jesus, and Jesus answers prayer. So the whole point is, you don't move into any of these events with fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a satanic spirit that is designed to destroy faith. And it's by faith that you get saved. It's faith that miracles occur. It's faith that causes mass evangelism and revival. So standing on the promises of God's word, putting faith in God's word, is how you are a supernatural overcomer in the last days. It's how you do what you're supposed to do before the Lord returns at his second coming. Before the Lord returns at his second coming, you're to be fully operational in using faith and spiritual weapons and engaging in spiritual warfare. So you shouldn't be looking all around and freaked out. You should be looking into the Word of God and allowing the the peace of God that passes all understanding to guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God wants to comfort you with His Holy Spirit, the Helper, The Counselor, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is is God's 
empowering tool. It's Jesus Christ living inside you. It's giving you a supernatural enablement. When you're clothed with power from on high, you're filled to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way that you and me, the only way that we as Christians can be overcomers in the last days is in the same way that we cannot save ourselves by our own energy and strength, in the same way you and I cannot be overcomers and victorious if we're relying on our own human strength. We must put our faith in the supernatural power of God. We must ask God to clothe us with power from on high, to fill us to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the supernatural energy, the supernatural force, the third person of the Trinity, that will enable you to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. This is, this is for you. You can reach out and live in this today, not tomorrow. You can reach out right now at this second and receive this and walk in it today by simply having a mustard seed of faith. A mustard seed of faith. That's all you need to activate this. That's how you will be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. So, so what, what, what does God's Word say? What, what does God's Word tell us to do? Well, let's look in the book of Acts and get our marching instructions, not from the Prophet of the Week Club or the Prophet of the Day Club. What happened to the Word of God for crying out loud? You're not going to be led astray by the Word of God. So, it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. So the promises of the Father that Jesus Christ was talking about was the, the promised coming of the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, I want to say this prophetically to some of you. When I say prophetically, I don't mean it's like, oh, I'm calling myself a prophet. I'm, I say I'm giving you a message prophetically. That means I'm giving a statement of a prophetic nature. That doesn't mean I'm coronating myself as the grand prophet. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, Jesus said, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. There's trials and tribulations that, uh, that are above and beyond coronaviruses. The way you're going to be victorious is that you have to be baptized or filled to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you have already received power from on high. Others of you are considering it. But this is what I want to say prophetically to you. As the birth pains intensify, as the stress intensifies, as the temptation to be afraid intensified. I, I just want to share this with you as, as loving encouragement, and that is this. God loves you so much that he is going to send a supernatural and extra enablement of the power of the Holy Spirit so that not many days from now, in fact, seconds from now, Many of you are going to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit, which means power from on high, which comes from the word dunamis, which means dynamite, the dynamite force of the Holy Spirit. The only way you're going to be victorious is to be filled with power from on high. So the way you get to be filled with power from on high is to obey God, exercise the mustard seed of faith, and ask him, just like you asked Jesus to save you and forgive your, give you of your sins, you ask him in the same way to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit, and he will. It's just that simple. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Jesus, saying, Lord, will you tell us at this time to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now listen to what he said. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. So what's with all these people announcing the times or seasons? Jesus didn't even know the times or seasons. But this is what Jesus said to them. But you shall receive power. That's you. That's me. But you shall receive power. 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, now this is this is thrilling, man. This is where the rubber meets the road. But you and me, and anybody who wants to, we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. See, we need this extra power to be victorious during the signs of the times in the last days. It's imperative that you get the power from on high that God wants to give you now. When the Spirit of God has come upon you, so when the Spirit of God has come upon you, when you've received power from on high, then you will be supernaturally enabled to be witnesses about Jesus Christ, or to to share your faith, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So wherever you live on planet earth, when you receive power from on high, you will be supernaturally enabled with the power, the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit to, to win people to Christ, to bring people to Christ, to bring in the last day's soul harvest. You will be supernaturally anointed with power from on high to win souls, and it is the Spirit of God in you that will be winning the souls, and you will see fruit like you've never seen it before. You will be an effective agent, living agent of the last day's soul harvest. That's why God has kept you alive. Wake up to your destiny. Get on board with your destiny. So, they're, they're in the upper room prayer meeting. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided uh, tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them, gave them utterance. And of course, uh, um, Peter is giving an apologetic for this because the crowd thinks that the, the, the disciples are drunk. But they weren't drunk. They were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and declaring the wonderful works of God. So Peter said, verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maidservants I will pour out my Spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. Prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming and great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So th- this, is, this is powerful stuff. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So in the last days, this is this is Peter quoting <clears throat> Joel chapter 2. <clears throat> in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's for us now and our children and our grandchildren. We're in the last days. This happened during the Jesus movement. It happened during the charismatic movement. It happened during the Reformation. And it's going to happen now. You are going to live to see a biblical third great awakening occur. Based on Acts chapter 2, it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I'll pour out my Spirit on all flesh. The Holy Spirit will be poured out on your flesh, children and grandchildren, people that you know, just like it was poured out upon you. Many of you know what I'm talking about. When it was poured out upon you decades ago, it's now going to be poured out upon, in their desperation, they're going to go through a shaking. 
And when they shake in desperation, they're going to cry out to God, and they will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power of the Holy Spirit is stirring inside you now. You can feel it. It's like a sea change in your inner man or inner woman. A power of the Holy Spirit is being stirred up within your inner man or inner woman. Power from on high. Power from on high. And along with that, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Perhaps grandsons and granddaughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. This millennial generation and other generations which have been so turned off to the power of the gospel, you're going to flip. You're going to see it change. You're going to see millions of millennials and people that were normally turned off to the gospel, all of a sudden they're going to be panting with hunger and thirst for the genuine, authentic power of the Holy Spirit. And they will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and they will do exploits. This this dead generation is going to come alive like Lazarus. Come forth, Jesus said. And all my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. That's the day. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire, vapor of smoke. We've seen that already. The the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. We've seen this already. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So as there's this shaking going on, in the perplexity of the shaking, people are going to be crying out to God privately. And as they cry out to God, they're going to be saved. They won't need an evangelist, or they or God will use an evangelist. But God God can save people with or without the help of evangelists. So you and I have been called for such, for such a time as this. God knew us before the foundation of the world. He called us for such a time of, as this to, to bring in this massive global last days soul harvest and this authentic biblical revival. Coronavirus or no coronavirus, soul harvest and a biblical revival will occur. Bible prophecy will occur. The question is, will you be on board with God's program? And I want to invite you that you can experience the most thrilling and intimate days of your entire life. By intimate, I mean you will know God with a realness that you've never known before. And all of this you can you can step into by simply using childlike faith and asking Christ to come in you and fill you with all his fullness. So we move forward in obedience. And so those of you that are intercessors, you are already praying for this revival, for this biblical great awakening. You're praying that God would raise up authentic ministries and ministers and people to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're praying for this ministry, and you're praying for me and my family that we might advance with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just not retreat, advance, win souls, not lose souls. But your prayers turns on the engines of God's power and causes it to happen. You're being willing to spread these messages far and wide through every kind of social media, plants the spiritual seeds that brings in the last day's soul harvest. And then finally, you want to know how God works? Then you're going to have to live on how God works. And that means you you move from being frightened and and uh, constrained by man's systems, and you recognize that it is God that is your supernatural source. It's God that gives you the power to get wealth. It's God that can raise you up positionally and give you favor. And it's God that can put down another. God has always been your source. You were just fooled like I was into thinking the middleman was our source. No, the middleman or woman wasn't our source. It was God. It was God that was always our source. So God is your source. And as you rely on God, and as you make requests of God, God will supernaturally meet all of your needs. 
and your children's needs, but you've got to call it. You've got to pray for it. That's how God's kingdom works. God, the word says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayst be in health and prosper even as thy soul prospers. God wants you to prosper. God God wants ministries like this to prosper. Why? Because the intent of this ministry, Paradise Mountain Church and Paul McGuire Ministries, the intent is to win souls, to spread revival, to prepare people for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, to teach Bible prophecy, and with your financial contributions, whenever any of you hear the Lord prompting you or speaking to you about how much you should give financially to this ministry, how much you should donate or contribute, and then you obey God, that all requires faith, but you're planting a seed, and you're financially enabling us to fulfill the ministry of winning souls and preaching the word that God has called us to do. And as you are faithful to do that, then God rewards your faithfulness by being faithful to take care of all of your business. It's always the law of reciprocity. As you sow, so shall you reap. When I see people that um, wonder why, they say, well, Lord, I don't see you doing this, I don't see you doing that. That's not the problem. If the heavens appear to be brass to you, like like somebody walled up the heavens and God's not answering your prayer, that's not God. You, whether you realize it or not, have gotten out of sync with God's laws. The heavens open up, or an open heaven occurs, when you become the man or woman that, that says, here I am, Lord. I'll stand in the gap. Remember, the Lord said in the Old Testament, he looked everywhere for, for a man to stand in the gap. He looked everywhere. This is God Almighty. He couldn't find one man to stand in the gap as an intercessor or a woman. Can God find a man or a woman in our time to stand in the gap? I believe that there are many of you listening to this program, the Paul McGuire Report, that you are people who have been standing in the gap for years and decades, praying not only for yourself, but for ministries such as this ministry. You have been intercessory prayer warriors. You have been spiritual warriors. And you have stood in the gap. You have said to the Lord, here I am, Lord. Here I am. And as such, the Lord blesses you and protects you because the blessing of a God is on those that choose to stand in the gap for Jesus. That's what this is all about. The second coming is coming. I don't have the date, neither does Jesus, but it's coming quicker than it ever has before. So let's get ready and then let's do let's not abandon our responsibilities. I think that is so such a twisting of the Bible when I hear people say, well, I'm going to leave all, you know, I'm planning on being raptured, so I'm leaving all my debt for the devil. Um, wait a minute, that, that, you're violating all of God's laws. What if you're wrong on any of your calculations? So, what if you, what if you end up leaving all your debt to your grandchildren or children or sons or daughters or whatever and they end up being responsible for your debt and they weren't believers but now because you twisted the word of God you you saddled them let's say with like $250,000 worth of debt that they can't pay off you think they're going to be open to Jesus you think they're going to be thinking fondly about Jesus knowing that you stuck it to them for $250,000? No, real Christians don't. Don't. Not pay their debts and, and uh, make up some weird statement about, I'm leaving the devil my debt. So that's, not, that's not biblical Christianity. That's being immature. And don't expect to be blessed with, unless you repent from that. That's, that's not 
operating with the integrity that God operates in. That's not the pathway to blessing. Now, if you've done that, I'm not here to condemn you because you can always repent of it. And you don't have to tell anybody what you said or thought. Just repent to God. Say, Lord, change, change me. That's selfish, Lord. Change me. We all need to be changed before the coming of the Lord, don't we? We all need to be ready. God bless you. This is your brother in Christ. Continue to march forward in faith. Continue to know that God will supply your need. That the Lord will answer your prayer. And that, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Keep your eye on Jesus. Jesus is far bigger than a coronavirus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Visit paulmcguire.us. Spread the information of all the links of our Roku channels and our social media channels, etc., etc. Get yourself copies of the book, The Greatest Battle, and, and spread it. Disseminate it. God bless you, your brother in Christ. This is Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. Mm-hmm.